all right i get it you just got your brand new sony a7c and you're just like yo what lens do i get that was literally me the first time i got the a7c of course i was searching for lenses i already knew which one i wanted first but i needed a secondary lens so in this video i'm going to tell you guys the two best lens you could start off with for your sony a7c all right let's get started <music> All right, so right now, the two lenses that I definitely recommend, and if you wanted a one and gun lens, it would be the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens, which comes in at just $1,000. And secondary lens for me is the Sony f 1.8 20 millimeter lens. And this one is just insane. Now, as I said before, these are the two best lens if you just got your Sony a7C, these are the two lenses I would recommend. And let's first start to talk about this one, which is like one of my favorite. And it's the one I actually got first, which arrived first, but actually like ordered both of them. But like this one is a super sharp and it, it's on sale right now for like $800, but it normally goes for $900. So right now is like the best time to cop this lens. Just in case you guys were wondering, I will show you footage of what the a7C looks like with these two lenses. But right now I'm filming on my a7S III with actually a APS-C Sigma 30mm cropped lens. So I had to punch in so it doesn't like have that fisheye view. But yes, you could use an APS-C lens on a full frame camera, but you just have to crop in a lot. Which, I don't know, it might lose quality, but just for the video's sake, I just wanted to show you guys these lenses. So yeah, let's first talk about this one which is the sony f 1.8 20 millimeter lens all right so the sony 20 mil what makes this lens so special is the fact that you're getting a very wide sharp lens at 20 millimeter you could fit so much into the shot while maintaining like a very sharp image opened up at f 1.8 as well you could get that nice blurry background. And also, if you work in like a dark space that doesn't have so much natural light, the f1.8 aperture will let in tons of light for you to work with. Now, I use this lens a lot when I'm doing unboxings with a lot of products on the desk, or just if I need to capture a lot of information, for example, when I'm doing like my massive tech unboxing videos or the AirPods video when I have like just a big desk with a lot of products, this is the only lens that could capture everything without cropping out like any items that I don't want to be cropped out. If I use like um, my 24 mil, and because my room is so small, I can't really go back that much. So yeah, if you're working in a tight space, I would, I would recommend this lens even over the Sigma just because it just fits so much into the shot with that 20 millimeter range. Another pro is that this lens is super lightweight, coming in at around 384 grams without the lens cap, I mean the lens hood on, which complements the form factor of the A7C because it's so small, they just fit perfectly together. It's also weather sealed, so you don't have to worry out too much when shooting out in dusty or wet conditions. Now, I'm not saying you're supposed to jump inside the pool with this thing, but I'm just saying that if you're out and about in the snow, the rain, you'll be perfectly fine. Also, if you guys saw my initial unboxing of this lens when I picked it up for the first time, you'd know how excited I was. Also, the packaging is really nice. It's really premium. You get like this leather sleeve case for um to protect the lens when you're traveling. You get the lens hood, all that stuff. But yeah, this lens, super good. I love it. Now, in terms of function and features, the focusing ring is on the front of the lens and it even has like a focus hole button. There's an autofocus slash manual focus switch, which I use a lot when filming B-roll. Sometimes the lens just won't focus when you want to or it keeps peaking. So just to have that switch right here to just go into manual focus mode, it's just a really game changer. There's also a switch to turn on and off the um, click with the aperture ring. So if you're recording stuff there, where's the, there's a button right here. So here, you see the little click button. So if I move the aperture, you can hear that, right? So if you're recording, you probably don't want that. So you could just turn the click off and you get that smooth aperture dial. And the click is just there just in case you want to be very accurate, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's nice to have the option to turn that on or off. But enough of me talking about the features and everything. Let's show you guys what this lens actually looks like. All right, now I'm recording on the Sony a7C with the Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 lens. The lens is open wide at f1.8. 
ISO 100, shutter speed 1 over 100. Now, if I'm supposed to turn up the ISO, by the way, all my studio lights are off. I just want to give you guys like a visual representation of how good the ISO range is with the camera and this lens. So let's turn the ISO up, 100, 125, 160, 200 ISO, 250, 320, 400, 500 ISO, 640, 800 ISO. So this is what it looks like at 800 ISO, and it could go higher, all right? We could, we could up that ISO range if you guys want to. So we could go to 1,000 ISO, 1,250, 1,600, 2,000, 2005, 3,000, 4,500, like ISO 200 and 4,000, that's crazy. So yeah, you could go crazy with the ISO guys, but let's put it down to like, I'd usually leave it at ISO 125, which is right here. And if I go ahead and turn on my studio lights, boom, turn this lights on, then you can see how good this lens is. And just look at the feel of view right here, guys. You still get a blurry, nice blurry background, as I was mentioning. You could do your little product shots. It's just insane. Like, look at all the space we have. But yeah, this is what the quality would look like. And I love this lens. But as I said before, it's not a zoom lens, so you're just stuck with this angle. So you have to get really creative with this. But yeah, this is the image quality you could like seem to um you could expect to get from this this is what the focusing is like with the a7c and the sony 20 mil f1.8 kind of weird but yeah it's really quick to focus in and out of stuff let's grab the sigma boom Yeah, this lens is it's really good. Now onto the big boy, the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 DGDN art lens for Sony E-mount coming in at $1,000. Now this is like the one man army lens. And as I mentioned earlier, if I could only buy one lens for my A7C, it would be this one right here. It's just perfect. It, it covers all my favorite focus distance, 24 mil, 35 mil 50 mil so instead of having like three different lenses I could just have one because it covers it even goes up to 70 if you want those nice creamy b-roll shots it does the job and it looks great now if you like to shoot portraits you're gonna love this as well because as I said before it goes up to 70 mil and you know if you're using the Sony the 20 the 20 mil alone it's not gonna look that great with portrait shots if you want to get like just the face down to the chest the person might look distorted like a fish eye view because when you get too close it kind of like wraps around it you know what I mean that shot you don't want to go for like a 35 mil or a 50 mil or even a 70 mil to get a really creamy nice looking background I don't know too much about cameras and lenses but that's just what I've seen based off of my experience so when I'm going out shooting photography in the street and stuff like that I rather to use the Sigma 24 to 70 just because of the versatility and if you want a wide shot you can still go down to 24 millimeter and get that wide shot as well and the reason why I think it's like one of the best lens for vlogging, even though it's kind of heavy, but if you um, have a tripod, it would ease up the weight. So make sure you guys are vlogging with a tripod and you're not just holding the camera itself because that would be just ridiculous. Now, I love this lens and all, but there's a few drawbacks in terms of the lens is really heavy, coming in at 836 grams and it's also f2.8, so you'd need to let in more light compared to the Sony 20mm f1.8 now that doesn't mean you can't use this lens in low light it still does a good job in low light and also the a7c does a great job with bumping up the iso but i would find myself just because of that the low light um issue i'd find myself bumping up the iso a lot to compensate for that f2.8 aperture so when you get this lens i'd also recommend you guys to invest in some good lighting especially if you film in a dark room but with lots of natural light if you have like lots of windows this shouldn't be an issue but aside from that i love everything about this lens and i use it way more often 
than my Sony 20mm f1.8. This lens is also weather sealed. It's perfect for wet or dusty conditions. You still have that autofocus and manual focus switch, which is extremely handy, as I mentioned earlier. It does have the focus lock button, just like the Sony does. And there's also a standard lock switch, so the lens doesn't zoom randomly by itself because it has a tendency to zoom by itself. You'd leave it at 20 mil, 24 mil when you look it's at 50 mil but you know what I mean just to like have that perfect um increment so if you're shooting outside and you you're walking and taking shots and you don't want the lens to um like slightly zoom down to like probably 35 mil having that lock button is really clutch and very smart from Sigma all right guys even though it's snowing really bad right now I'm dedicated to giving you guys the best content so I want to show you some outside footage of the Sigma lens and yeah I have to turn the ISO down the shutter speed down I probably need to yeah it's really bad outside right now but yeah this is what it looks like at 24 mil zooming in and like it it's not like wobbly you know what I mean it keeps that focus I really like that about it but yeah it's so bad outside guys actually went down to f 3.2 maybe an nd filter would have come in handy right here but yeah this is what vlogging with this lens would look like and as i said before if you're vlogging and you want to capture something that's kind of far away you could just zoom in you know what i mean get funny shots zoom into your friends faces boom and yeah that's what i love about this lens man and look how look how good the a7c performs outside it's ridiculously good all the snow but yeah hopefully this video kind of helps you guys to decide but the wind is insane i have to go back inside right now all right i hope you enjoyed that little quick video i try my best to showcase what these lens are capable of if i missed anything let me know down below in the comments because i probably did and yeah i just want to try to help you guys as much as possible so if there's anything you want to um ask me about these lenses and the a7c is it worth it 100% so drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section guys as always love peace and tweaks signing out